for Frodo. The Lord of the Rings is the greatest story ever written, and nothing will ever come close. But to explain to you why this is, we have to start at the beginning. January 3, 1892, John Ronald Rule Tolkien is born in South Africa. And growing up, uh, Tolkien isn't in rich gang, but uh, does represent some remarkable academic poise, and uh, his life takes him to many amazing sights, many of which inspired the destinations in his later writing. When the Great War breaks out, Tolkien enlists and serves for four months on the front lines. During this time, he's writing elements of what would later become the Lord of the Rings and the accompanying universe. Tolkien would eventually return from the Great War, but uh, most of the friends in his book club at that time would be victims to the war and wouldn't come home. So Tolkien would eventually marry his close friend Edith and have four children, and at night he would tell his children stories about a character called Bilbo Baggins, about dwarves and about a dragon. And when his children became inquisitive, namely Christopher Tolkien, of the details of the story, J.R.R. Tolkien began writing parts of it down so that he wouldn't forget the details. Eventually, what began as a bedtime story became what so many of us revere as being one of the best stories ever written, there and back again, or better known as The Hobbit. And one of the first editions of this story, Tolkien handed over to another well-known author and theologian who you might have heard of, C.S. Lewis. And Lewis expressed high praises for the book. And in September 1937, J.R.R. Tolkien publishes The Hobbit. It's received well. In a small way, Tolkien tested the waters with The Hobbit to see how the Middle-earth universe would be received. And then 16 years later, Tolkien capitalizes on his success and publishes The Fellowship of the Ring. And yeah, it's even better than The Hobbit. 105 days pass, and Tolkien publishes The Two Towers. It's a compelling continuation of the story. Give it another 343 days, and Tolkien publishes The Crowning Jewel of Literary Excellence, the third installment of the series, originally titled The War of the Ring, but publishers later decided they didn't care what Tolkien thought and went with a different suggestion, and named the book The Return of the King. Between their release dates many years ago and present day, these books proceeded to become some of the best-selling books of all time. The sources which make available on the internet such numbers as it pertains to the best-selling books of all time cannot seem to agree with each other. Nevertheless, The Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit consistently find themselves on all of these lists. Aside from religious texts like the Bible, The Lord of the Rings has been ranked anywhere from first to fourth sell best-selling books of all time. And then another 47 years passes from the release of Return of the King in 2002. Realizing there was a buttload of money to be procured, Peter Jackson and company released the Fellowship of the Ring, the movie, and then a movie for each of the books Tolkien published in the 1950s. Those who read Tolkien's masterpiece came to the consensus that the movies were among the best ever made, but still not better than the books. Ten years later, and with a desire to have pockets stuffed with money greater than a turkey is stuffed on Thanksgiving, Peter Jackson and company created three more movies based off of The Hobbit. An Unexpected Journey, The Desolation of Schmal, and The Battle of the Five <laughs> Enthusiasts of Tolkien's writing agreed it was entertaining, but not as good as the Lord of the Rings movies, and definitely was not as good as either the Lord of the Rings books or The Hobbit book. Check out Squid Game's commentary on The Hobbit. Give it 10 more years, and Daddy Bezos at Amazon drops the Rings of Power episode series. The consensus among anyone who had ever seen or read any of the books aforementioned Agreed, uh, it needs some work. No one has ever written a story even minutely as powerful as Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and Hobbit uh, since the author lived, nor will there ever be one that comes close. Here's why. As a child, Tolkien learned Latin and Greek as easily as any of us may learn a simple academic concept like multiplication. Whilst knowing English, Greek, and Latin, Tolkien created languages of his own, most famously two versions of Elvish, Rohirrim, Dwarvish, and Black Speech. Tolkien consumed the best literary content during his academic years and taught what he learned for many years after. Very few people have ever rivaled Tolkien in terms of literacy intelligence. In Tolkien's top writing tips, he speaks to basing characters off of people that you meet in real life. This makes a lot of sense when you ponder it. You don't have to make up what a person might do if you already know that person. This helps that person become more ironed out as character 
and feel like an actual person. Tolkien lost almost all of his friends he had in his early writers club because of the Great War. War is something few of us can even comprehend and hopefully we'll never have to, but this unique and traumatic human experience adds to the inspiration in Tolkien's writing in a way few writers can. It's a no coincidence that other great writers served in war as well, C.S. Lewis, Dr. Seuss, and Stan Lee to name a few. C.S. Lewis obviously was another legendary writer and friend of Tolkien. Having the benefit of being surrounded by one of the goats also contributed to putting together refined and high quality pieces of writing. This begs the question, which of Tolkien's characters were inspired by the people in his life? Which character is inspired by C.S. Lewis? Which characters were based off of the friends he lost in war? Knowing that his characters have such valuable inspiration, doesn't that make it that much more interesting? Finally, the reason why the Lord of the Rings will stand for many years, and maybe all years that may ever come, as the best story ever written. The Lord of the Rings is not a short series of books, but my brother described it to me like this. If the Lord of the Rings was the book of John in the Bible, 20 chapters, the rest of everything Tolkien ever created would be like the rest of the entire Bible. 1,189 chapters. Have you ever wondered how they keep coming out with these books written by Tolkien? It's because Tolkien wrote so much lore that he never published about this universe that people can take him and make profit off of him even to this day. All of the lore Tolkien ever wrote was essentially his life's work, and The Lord of the Rings was the absolute pinnacle of the best story ever created by the best author ever to live. So, will a story ever be told as good as The Lord of the Rings? And the closest thing I can think of would be the Marvel Cinematic Universe created by Stan Lee. The life's work of a legend, inspired by unimaginable experiences, years of comics, years of movies that all led up to Endgame. A great story simply can't be crapped out in a few years, no matter how much money you throw at it. One day, hopefully, bruh video production will make movies, and it would be a passion of mine to tell compelling stories. And if that day ever comes, I can promise you the stories will be the brainchild of many years of thought and incredibly unique experiences. Thanks to the golden standard set by the greatest author of all time, J.R.R. Tolkien, and the pinnacle of his career, the Lord of the Rings. My friends.